An automobile or car, is a wheeled vehicle that carries its own motor and transports passengers. The automobile, as we know it was not invented in a single day by a single inventor. The history of the automobile, reflects an evolution, that took place worldwide involving many different innovators. And one of the most amazing things about them, is that no one invented them, no single person, that is. There was no scribbling on the back of an envelope, no lightning flash of inspiration, and no one ran down the street crying, Eureka! All the different parts the engine, the wheels, the gears, and all the fiddly bits, like the windscreen wipers somehow came together, very gradually, over a period of about five and a half thousand years. It is estimated that over 100,000 patents, led to the evolution of the modern automobile. How did it happen? Let's take a closer look at the movie History of Car. All I hear go get the money, so I go get it. Hate means I do something right, so I'ma let them. Show you what I'm worth, my hands in the dirt From where they look when you not, a hand in your purse Hell if you think I'm last, they last should be first, 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 first Go ahead and go feast your eyes, chefing up, cooking them pies Leaving no slice, believe on a guy, who in demand and who got supplies You on the land, me I'm fly, look at the miles, I be in skies Right by my side, miss look at them thighs, up in Dubai You see us, black man, black sand beaches Yeah Backhand if you slick speaking Yeah Cut off if that hand reaches Right Sucker, I ain't about child leeches All I hear go get the money So I go get it Hate means I do something right So I'ma let em Yeah, I'ma let em, yeah, yeah Yeah, I'ma let em I hit the nail on the head, yeah All I hear go get the money So I go get it Get it, get it Hate means I do something right Right So I'ma let em yeah, I'm a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm a little. I let her. I hit the nail on the head, yeah, yeah, I'm a little. Women with shots in the tank. Aquaman, we have a thing. How many can step on the stage and say they taking it all to the bank? You pulling rank. Boy, I'm sharp as a shank. Making you step to the plank. They capitan. Come get me if you can. I'ma get you if you can. They seen a prank. I have you waving the flag. Could say I'm all in my bag. Get in my bags. Never see me getting back. By the police sitting in the back. Only if it's with a drag. I tell these shorties relax. It's the return of the Mac. You the return of the slack. I let it burn with the facts. Opposites they do attract. I don't go mess with the ops. I just be calling the shots. Like I was holding the chop. Then I go hit up the block. Cop me a cheese and chop. Probably go get me some top. Release for aftershock. Then I return to the plot. Jacking the gold at the pot. Gotta get it while it's hot. People have been thinking, about different ways to travel for thousands of years. As time has gone on, they have devised, increasingly more effective and efficient methods of travel. The automobile, made a dramatic change in the way people travel. There is no simple answer to the question of who invented the automobile, and when. It has been a work in progress, developing over the past several hundred years. The car, is one of the most important inventions of mankind and the history of the creation of transport is full of interesting and entertaining episodes. In fact, the history of only one passenger car,
can be devoted not only to a separate book, but to whole multivolume collected works. The first transport capable of transporting a person and goods without using muscular or draft force dates, back to the end of the 18th century, but in the usual sense, a car appeared at the end of the 19th millennium. Therefore, now let's talk about mass-produced passenger cars, that have played a significant role in the history of the global automotive industry. The history of cars, involved people from different countries who in ways large and small, contributed to its development. The automobile, as we know, it started from crude but machines, that by degrees underwent a transformation, due to dedicated work by several people. It is estimated that over 100,000 patents created the modern automobile. However, we can point, to the many firsts that occurred along the way. There are disagreements, as to which automobile was the first actual car. Some claim it was invented, in 1769, with the first self-propelled steam-powered military tractor, invented by French engineer Joseph Cugnot. Others claim it was Gottlieb Daimler's vehicle in 1885, or Carl Benz's in 1886 when he patented, the first gas-powered vehicles. And depending on your viewpoint, there are others who believe Henry Ford invented the first true car, due to his perfection of the mass production assembly line, and the car transmission mechanism that cars today are modeled from. It all began with the horse. Or a camel. Or maybe a dog. No one really knows which animal, prehistoric humans picked on first. People tended to stay put, living more locally than they do now. If they needed to move things about, they had to float them down rivers or drag them by sled. All that started to change when humans, realized the animals, around them had raw power, they could tap and tame. These, beasts of burden, were the first engines. A car is like a cart, with a built-in horse, a horseless carriage that doesn't eat grass, wear shoes or leave a steaming pile of muck wherever it goes. The engineers, who set out to make the first cars had a big problem on their hands. How to squeeze the power of a galloping horse into a small, reliable engine. This tricky problem, taxed the best minds of the day. The experiments with steam, had been the first attempt to solve it, but though coal-powered steam engines were excellent for pulling trains, they weren't so good in cars. Apart from the clunking great engine itself, you had to carry a mini mountain of coal, and a tank full of water. Some ingenious Europeans, starting searching for better fuels and more compact engines. They were a mixture of, thinkers, and, doers. The history of the car is very rich, and dates back to the 15th century, when Leonardo da Vinci created designs and models for vehicles. It could be argued, of course, that an absurdly talented genius, known to his friends as Leo, beat Benz to designing the first automobile by several hundred years. Among the many incredible inventions, of the great Leonardo da Vinci was a design for the world's first self-propelled vehicle, no horses required. His ingenious contraption, drawn by his hand in 1495, was spring-driven, and needed to be wound up before setting off, but it was highly complex and, as it turns out, completely feasible. In 2004, a team from the Institute and Museum of the History of Science in Florence used da Vinci's detailed plans, to build a full-scale model, and sure enough, Leonardo's automobile, actually did work. Even more incredibly, the ancient design features, the world's first steering column, and a rack and pinion gear system, the basis of the way we still steer our vehicles today. To be fair though, Leonardo probably never got as far as building his idea, for a prototype, it actually would have been nearly impossible, with the tools available to him at the time, or riding around town on it. He even forgot to include seats. And, when it comes to the most common modern automobiles, we know of today, his automobile was missing something vital that Benz's could boast. 
the first internal combustion engine, and thus the first petrol car. It is the use of that fuel, and that engine design, that eventually won out in the race to make the world's first horseless carriages, and why the German gets the credit, despite the fact that a Frenchman called, Joseph Cugno built the first, self-propelled road vehicle, which was basically a tractor with three wheels for use by the military, back in 1769. Yes, it could only do about 4 km per hour and it wasn't really a car, but the main reason he's missed out on household name status, is that his contraption ran on steam, making it more of a land-going train. Mind you the Automobile Club de France, to still credit Joseph Cugno as the creator of the first car ever. Of course, it's important to note that Carl Benz wasn't the first person to come up with the engine. As early as 1680, a Dutch physicist called Christian Huygens came up with the idea for an internal combustion engine, and it's probably a good thing he never actually built it, because his plan was to power it with gunpowder. And even Carl Benz had help, from another fellow with a name familiar to fans of Mercedes-Benz, Gottlieb Daimler, who, in 1885, designed the world's first modern engine, with a single, vertical cylinder and petrol injected through a carburetor. He even attached it to a car, of sorts, called the Reitwagen. His engine was very similar to the single-cylinder, two-stroke gasoline engine, that would drive the vehicle patented by Carl Benz the next year. When the first machine was invented, it is a question as controversial as the definition. Of course, Gottlieb Daimler has his own claim to the title, as in 1889 he came up with not only this first base engine, but also a significantly improved version of it with a B-shaped four-stroke two-cylinder engine that is much closer to the designs still in use today than a single-cylinder unit on the Benz patent motorwagen. The French must be given credit to Panard and Leviser in 1889, and then Peugeot in 1891 became the world's first car manufacturers, which means they didn't just tinker with prototypes, they actually built entire cars and sold them. The first recorded use of a self-powered vehicle was in 1769, when Joseph Cugno, a French military engineer, designed and built, an awkward but workable three-wheeled vehicle powered by a steam engine. The vehicle was intended as a tractor, for hauling heavy cannons. During the early history of cars, both road and railroad vehicles, were being developed with steam engines. Steam engines added so much weight to a vehicle, that they proved a poor design for road vehicles. However, steam engines were very successfully used in locomotives. As impractical as these cars were, their design served as the basis for subsequent self-propelled vehicles, enriching the history of automobiles, and ultimately, became the base for the design, of the car we know today. The history of cars continued on Christmas Eve, 1801 when frightened British farmers rushed to their windows to witness, the first practical use of mechanical power to move a vehicle. What they saw, was a smoke belching, steam-powered carriage moving, without being pulled by a man or an animal. It was driven by their neighbor, Richard Trevi Thick, and he was driving the world's first true automobile. Trevi Thick's self-propelled carriage, could carry passengers over land, at a speed of nearly 10 miles per hour. And only if those neighbors knew at that time, a page in the history of cars had been unfolding. Neither his neighbors, nor even Trevi Thick, himself appreciated the importance of his achievement. 
he considered his noisy carriage a little more than fun. A few years after Trevi Thick's steam engine, American inventor Oliver Evans built a steam-powered dredge equipped with wheels so that it could move on land. He drove it around Philadelphia's center square to convince wealthy people to provide capital in manufacturing steam vehicles. The first patent for an automobile in the United States was granted to Oliver Evans in 1789. Oliver Evans demonstrated his first successful self-propelled car, which was not only the first car in the United States of America, but also the first amphibious car, as it was able to travel on wheels, on the ground and by means of blades on the water. Such cars were in vogue for a time and over the next decades, innovations such as handbrake, multi-speed transmission, and improved steering were developed. But these early steam coaches soon ran into opposition. Stagecoach and railroad operators resented and feared their competition. Some were commercially successful in providing public transportation until public resistance against these overly fast cars led to the adoption of from 1831 to 1865 by the British Parliament had a series of strict laws that impeded the development of the automobile. The strictest of these was the 1865 Red Flag Act, so named because one of the provisions of the law required a person to walk in front of all road locomotives to warn of their approaching vehicles. Unfortunately, various laws imposed so many restrictions and such high taxes that steam locomotives could not operate without losing money. This hurt the development of automobiles in England, until the Red Flag Act was repealed in 1896. Vital to the modern automobile was the internal combustion engine. An internal combustion engine is an engine that uses the explosive combustion of fuel to push a piston within a cylinder. The piston's movement turns a crankshaft that then turns the car wheels via a chain or a drive shaft. The different types of fuel commonly used for car combustion engines are gasoline or petrol diesel and kerosene one of the most important landmarks in engine design comes from august auto who in 1876 invented an effective gas motor engine auto was no scientific thinker far from it he was a traveling grocery salesman who taught himself engineering during the 1860s he tinkered with various engine designs and in 1876 finally came up with a really efficient gasoline engine, which worked by methodically repeating the same four steps, or, strokes, again and again. Virtually every car engine has worked the same way ever since. The early auto engine used a four-stroke principle of operation, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Automotive engines today operate on this principle. Auto's engine was originally powered by coal gas, but was soon adapted for use with other fuels. Auto's engine was compact, but powerful, unlike the bulky, noisy, and clumsy engines decades ago. These early cars were instrumental in later developments. German engineer Karl Benz studied Otto's work and determined to do better. After building a simpler gasoline engine of his own, he fixed it to a three-wheeled carriage and made the world's first practical gas-powered car in 1886. Nobody paid much attention to it until the courageous wife of Benz, Bertha, decided to ride this car in the city. 
Once without asking her husband's permission, Berta took a car and went on a trip to her grandmother. They bought fuel at drug stores, chemists' shops because gas stations had yet to be invented, and the boys had to get out every so often to push the car up hills. Bertha even had to stop a couple of times to make repairs with her hairpin and garter belt. News of this intrepid early test drive caught the public's imagination. Benz couldn't have dreamed up a better publicity stunt if he'd tried. Soon he was developing successful four-wheel cars, and by the start of the 20th century, was the world's leading car maker. While some of the very first cars were powered by steam engines, dating back to the 1700s, it was Carl Benz in 1885 who invented the first gas-powered car, which he later received a patent for in 1886. Benz's first car had three wheels, looked much like an elongated tricycle and sat two people. Four-wheeled gas-powered cars were later introduced in 1891. The first cars didn't have windshields, doors, turn signals, or even a round steering wheel a far cry from what we've become accustomed to. It can be said that Carl Benz's first gas-powered car was the major catalyst for the production of modern automobiles, as many automakers followed in his footsteps, trying to create their own version of a car. At the time, electric vehicles were on their way to being the norm. But there was one problem with early electric vehicles. People were interested in owning them, but the elaborate machines were too expensive for the middle class. It wasn't until Henry Ford's 1908 Model T that automobiles started to resemble what we're familiar with today. Thanks to Henry Ford's invention of the assembly line, the gas-powered Model T could be mass-produced and became affordable for the general population. Henry Ford had been working with Thomas Edison to create a better battery for electric vehicles, but the success of the affordable Model T halted the progress. Another factor was the invention of the electric starter in 1912. It eliminated the need to hand crank gas-powered vehicles. Today the opposite is true. The high cost of gasoline and pollution concerns have helped electric vehicles make a comeback. And Edison would be happy to know that the latest electric vehicles have batteries that will go up to million miles. Between 1890 and 1930, the concept of an automobile emerged, which resulted in competing types of cars powered by electricity, batteries, gasoline, and steam. An electric car was superior to a steamboat or a gas-powered car because it ran quietly and smoothly, without vibration or unpleasant odors like the competition. No complex set of gears or clutches was required to transfer power to the wheels or to work in the opposite direction. But they are only good for 20 to 40 miles. The batteries are then discharged. And the low speed 12 miles per hour did not appeal to potential buyers. In the late 1890s and early 1900s, steam cars were even more popular than electric cars. In those days, there were over 100 different companies of American steamers. The steamers offered more power than the electric ones and ran quietly and smoothly, but their shortcomings were serious. The steam took a long time to accumulate and the procedures were complicated. The owners also feared that the boiler might explode. An internal combustion engine is much more complex than a steam engine or electric motor. But its advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Although it has more moving parts, it can produce more power relative to its weight than other motors. But these days, people's preferences have changed. Potential customers began to purchase electric cars, as electric cars are safer, 
faster, more environmentally friendly, do not require buying and refueling, and other costs, and of course, they are more modern today. Nowadays, electric vehicles have undergone huge upgrades using advanced technology in their vehicles, whose batteries are capable of running a million miles, and of course on autopilot. In those years, most thinkers carefully designed engines for automobiles. One of them was Rudolf Diesel. Rudolf Diesel was both a thinker and a doer. Confined to hospital, after an accident, he spent months poring over books and papers by people like Carnot and Otto. He soon came to the conclusion that he could build a far better engine than the puny gasoline machines Benz and Daimler had designed and knocked up a prototype, an enormous 3-meter high machine, in the early 1890s. This first diesel engine made twice as much power as a similar steam engine, and even more remarkably, could run on practically any fuel at all, even oil made from peanuts and vegetables. Diesel, in other words, was a pioneer of biofuels long, before people had a name for them. While inventors like Diesel, were developing engines, in a careful scientific way, a hapless American called Charles Goodyear found the secret of making car tires, completely by accident. After learning about rubber, he convinced himself, he could make his fortune by turning it into useful objects, like waterproof shoes. All attempts ended in disaster and his life became a catalog of misery and misfortune. His shoes melted in the summer heat, six of his twelve children died in infancy, and his family had to live in grinding poverty, eating fish from the river. But Goodyear was determined. When debts landed him in jail, he simply asked his wife to bring him a rolling pin and some rubber and he carried on inventing in his cell. He finally made his big breakthrough when he accidentally dropped a piece of rubber on a hot stove. It cooked and shriveled into a hard dark mass that Goodyear immediately spotted as the thing he'd wanted all along. This is how he developed the tough dark rubber we use in tires today by a cooking process now known as vulcanization. By the early 20th century, gasoline-powered cars were fast, reliable, and exciting. Plus, they were insanely expensive. In 1893, Carl Benz's simple Victoria car cost £8,000, about £50,000 today, and hardly anyone could afford it, he sold just 40 of them. The automakers stuck with big, expensive cars, so buyers stayed with their horses and carts. Then the courageous American engineer, Henry Ford came, and decided that everything should be different. Henry Ford was no scientist, but he'd been repairing watches and tinkering with machines since he was a boy. Never afraid of rolling up his sleeves, he loved machinery and understood it instinctively. His first car was little more than a four-wheel motorbike that he called the quadricycle. When he took it on the streets of Detroit in 1896, horses bolted in all directions. Henry Ford loved machines, and hated horses, so he hatched a simple plan. He'd make the simplest possible, horseless carriage, and he'd make it in such enormous quantities, in only one color, that he could sell it cheaply, to a huge number of people. It took him 10 years to get things right. In fact, he made eight different models before, he finally came up with a winner, the Model T, launched in 1908, a car everyone could afford. Around 15 million Model T, Fords were eventually sold, and a delighted and very rich Henry Ford scribbled in his notebook, the horse is done.
The introduction of the mass production assembly line was a major innovation that revolutionized the automobile industry. American car manufacturer, Henry Ford, invented an improved assembly line and installed the first conveyor belt-based assembly line in his car factory in Ford's Highland Park, Michigan plant, around 1913. The assembly line reduced production costs for cars by reducing assembly time. Henry Ford's famous Model T was assembled in 93 minutes. Another victory won by Henry Ford was a patent battle with George Selden. George Selden, who had never built an automobile, held a patent on a road engine. On that basis George Selden was paid royalties by all American car manufacturers. Henry Ford overturned Selden's patent and opened the American car market for the building of inexpensive cars. 30 American manufacturers produced 2,500 motor vehicles in 1899, and some 484 companies entered the business in the next decade. In 1908 Henry Ford introduced the Model T, and William Durant founded General Motors. The new firms operated in an unprecedented seller's market for an expensive consumer goods item. With its vast land area and a hinterland of scattered and isolated settlements, the United States had a far greater need for automotive transportation than the nations of Europe. Great demand was ensured, too, by a significantly higher per capita income and more equitable income distribution than European countries. Given the American manufacturing tradition, it was also inevitable that cars would be produced in larger volume at lower prices than in Europe. The absence of tariff barriers between the states encouraged sales over a wide geographic area. Cheap raw materials and a chronic shortage of skilled labor early encouraged the mechanization of industrial processes in the United States. Ford's mass production techniques were quickly adopted by other American automobile manufacturers. European automakers did not begin to use them until the 1930s. The heavier outlays of capital and larger volume of sales that this necessitated ended the era of easy entry and freewheeling competition among many small producers in the American industry. Along with mass production, came new features, some of the first being speedometers, seatbelts, windshields and rearview mirrors. Believe it or not, the first turn signals weren't added to a car, until Buick did it in 1939 that's even, after the first car, Packard, with electric windows and air conditioning. Then cars started to get fancy, with power steering, cruise control, three-point seatbelts and heated seats. In 1973, Oldsmobile installed the first passenger airbag into their Toronado model. Over 20 years later, in 1998, the federal government required all passenger vehicles to come standard with dual frontal airbags. In the late 80s and early 90s keyless entry systems, electric doors and windows, sunroofs and CD players, began to be standard features. This is about the time when technology became a big selling point. This brings us to modern day cars, with Bluetooth, hard drives, advanced safety systems, GPS, Wi-Fi and even the ability to parallel park themselves. It seems crazy, but it's true. In this age, cars come standard with features that were once a luxury or didn't even exist at all. And driverless cars that once seemed like something out of a science fiction film are close to being a reality. It's amazing to think how far cars have come and where the technology will go down the road.
Anticipation, this situation, infatuation. We pause for the cause on hesitation. I stop, think about it like meditation. Yes, yes, y'all, this is my creation. We did it for the black Puerto Rican and Haitian. International United Nation. Pinpointed on the map where the song was placed in. Play it again, you can't replace it. It's stuck in the clouds, you can't erase it, kid. Permanent marker calling the Sharpie. Against all I stick and move with Archie. Yeah, shout out to England. Yes, I'm singling them out because they know what I'm talking about yeah play it again play it again your brand new pen pal about to slay it again cause i see when you post it up dress fly as fuck like you don't give a what i see if your ride is clean and your brim is flat but your team is mean i see when you cut on the scratching back spinning and the band is matching i see when you rock with nitro tell everybody that i got the nice flow I see Shady, shiesty, slick, conniving in Wishy-washy, I'm just diving in I'm reliable, no accountability The incompetence is killing me Did you ever cross an ocean? Yup Did they ever jump a puddle? No Excuse me, how you gon' call plays? I'm the Pat Mahomes, I'm the one here running this huddle shit First to show, the last to leave And it's the blueprint, how you last and lead And I don't need nobody gassing me I just stay by the body like Master P Uh I don't need nobody saying they attached to me, no Can I get a receipt though? Cause nowadays you need proof you pay for the beat, yo When I'm in your town and I'm at your show And you getting that dough, I see When the kick is tight and your snare is right The whole vibe is nice, I see If you a born jerk and you the scum of the earth Since the beginning of birth, I still see If you buy that life but you ain't got no choice You gotta use your voice, I see Post it up, dress fly as fuck, like you don't give a what I see. If your ride is clean and your brim is flat, but your team is mean, I see. When you cutting the scratching, back spinning and the blend is matching, I see. When you rock with nitro, tell everybody that he got the nice flow, I see.